Hey everyone, we're going to get started in maybe 30 seconds or so, just so I can wait for other people to get here. So it's 101. I think that's a good time as I need to start. So hi, everybody. My name is Sophie, and I'm part of the customer success team based in Toronto. Thank you for taking the time to join us for today's introductory webinar, which is part of our October workflows series. Today, our introductory webinar will have a particular focus on optimizing the platform for DMCs. So we'll be talking about creating vendors and templates, collaborating with travel agents, and co-branding trips. So while we'll still be going over all of the main new mapped features, our focus today will be on the best features for DMCs. So during today's webinar, you will learn how UMAPT is helping leading global brands and travel uh, professionals engage with their customers throughout their entire travel journey. You'll also see how the platform maximizes productivity and streamlines your business workflow. During today's 35 minute webinar, we'll start with an overview of the client experience. So taking a look at how travelers will receive and view their trips online via the mobile app and as a PDF. Next, we'll demo UMAP's trip building platform for travel professionals called Trip Publisher. And we'll finish today's webinar with a review of the training resources and the support available to you, making sure to save some time for a live Q&A. Before we begin, I just want to ensure that everybody has access to a complimentary trial. If you haven't already signed up for a trial, visit umap.com forward slash trial, or just go to our main page, umap.com, and click on the sign up button located at the top right corner of the page and complete the trial form. After submitting your request, our customer success team will send you a confirmation email with your account credentials and login instructions. We also recommend that you reach out to us by responding to the confirmation email with your logo and main contact person so that we can add you to our suppliers page. Let me just go to that really quickly. So you can access the suppliers page um, within the UMAP website, and this is also accessible to travel agents within the trip publisher itself. We're currently optimizing this uh, part of the website so that clicking on any single one of these uh, different logos will initiate an email conversation with the main contact at the DMC or tour operator um, in order to begin the collaboration process. So if you'd like to be part of this list, just send us your logo and main contact person as a response to the welcome email. Okay, so let's begin our live demo by reviewing the client experience. When ready, all travelers emails are delivered by email. All travelers' trips are delivered by email and are available in three different formats. Clients can access their trips online, as a PDF, and via the UMAP mobile app. All formats of the trip are branded for you and include your company logo and contact details. So this here in front of me is an example of the email travelers will receive, giving them access to their trip. Your branding and contact details will be displayed at the bottom of the trip. This email is all your client needs in order to access their trip. They can click on the view your trip button in order to access the web view of their trip, as well as the trip PDF, or click on the App Store or Google Play Store icons in order to download the UMAP mobile app. So let's start by taking a look at the web view. This view your trip button opens a dynamic trip link that could be bookmarked and then accessed at any time. 
when clients are accessing the WebView for the very first time, they're just going to need to enter their email address in order to validate that they're actually a traveler on this trip. And then the first thing your clients will see in their day-by-day -day itinerary is your branding right at the top. So your branding and contact information is always displayed front and center. And there is also a download button right here for the trip PDF of which we have two different versions, a full PDF or a print-friendly option without images. So I'll download this and then come back to this in a few moments. And then they can access all of the trip details just by scrolling down. And for all of the photos that are displayed here, they've been added from one of the many image libraries available in the trip publisher. We have hotel and cruise photos preloaded for many properties and cruise lines, as well as a photo library licensed for commercial reuse. Also note this chat icon, which displays on trip segments. This is the messenger feature. When enabled, it allows for real-time chat and notifications, which your clients can access on the web and the mobile app trip views. When your clients chat with you using the messenger, you'll receive an email notification and you can even reply directly from your email. You can also access chat messages from within the trip publisher itself and your reply will display into the chat window just much like this. And for flight segments, let me just scroll up to one. This is where your clients will receive any day of flight notifications. You'll also notice the add icon, this little blue plus button, located on the bottom right corner of the page. This is the traveler collaboration feature. When enabled, it allows for travelers to add their own um, bookings, such as a restaurant booking, if they have any notes that they'd like to add, or any activities that they've booked on their own, giving them one consolidated view of their trip. And it's available within the web view as well as the mobile app. And now that we've looked at some of the different features in the main body of the itinerary, let's look at some of the different tabs at the top of the screen up here. The Documents tab is where any supporting documentation for the trip is available. So this can include PDF attachments like vouchers and e-tickets, destination content, and any other important travel information that your clients may need to reference. Beside that, the trip map will pinpoint all of the different destinations that your clients are traveling to. And there is also a trip calendar where clients can view all of the trip details in a calendar view with the option to sync to their personal Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, or iCal. The WebView itself is mobile responsive and will resize to fit to whatever device your client is using. So whether they're on a phone, a tablet, or a desktop. Otherwise, they do always have the option to download the PDF if they're a little bit less tech savvy and they just prefer having a paper copy. And like I mentioned, um, this can either be with or without photos. And there are four different design templates that you can select from in your preferences in the trip publisher, but we'll get to that later on. And then lastly, I'm just gonna share my entire screen so I can pull up my mobile simulator. Your clients also have the option to download the UMAP mobile app from either the App Store or the Google Play Store so that they can view their trips while they're on the go or in destination. One of the great benefits of the mobile app is that trip details are available even when your client's phone is offline. So even if they don't have Wi-Fi or network connection. Again, if I go into a flight or a hotel segment, you'll notice they can also access directions as well as live weather reporting. And just to be consistent, at the very top of every trip, you'll see your branding and all of the ways to get in contact with you. The only real difference between the two uh, interfaces is that you'll notice that the calendar function isn't carried across in the mobile app. And that's because the mobile app kind of acts like a calendar in and of itself. So if I go into a trip that's already started, like London Getaway, it'll automatically scroll me to the appropriate day or the closest date, which is uh, October 13th in this case, the last in the day. 
All right, so now let's just go back to my regular screen. Perfect. So now that you can see what a client would receive, I'm going to show you around the Trip Publisher itself, which is UMAP's trip building application for travel professionals. So this is where you can build and edit your proposals and itineraries. To log in, go to pub-trip.umap.com forward slash login. And then I'm just going to put in my credentials. Initially, once you're logged in, you're going to be taken to your dashboard, your trips dashboard, that is. So at the top right, you'll be able to find your account details. So if you click on this little silhouette right up here in the top right, a drop down will appear and display my account, submit feedback, send us an email, and log out. For the middle two options, it's just how you can get in contact with a member of our customer success team. So I usually recommend initially selecting my account. For new users, uh, the user profile tab is where you can come to customize your contact information if you want to leave a phone number or a Facebook or any social media or a website, etc. And other than just user profile, you also have the opportunity here to uh, select your preferences. So if you want to turn on or off flight notifications, for example, or traveler messaging, whatever you like. And this is also where you can come to choose between those four different PDF layouts that I mentioned. And then lastly, plans is just where you can come to view what plan you're currently on. If you need to update any credit card details, you could do that here. And you can also download invoices. All right, so to go back to our actual dashboard, you can click on this back to trips button at the top of the screen. And all of the trips that you have created will be visible within the default tab, My Trips, right here. If you've been added to a trip by a, by a travel agent as a collaborator, you'll be able to access those trips by going to Trips Shared With Me. So this is everything you've been added as a collaborator to. Depending on your access level, which you can determine from this last column over here, you'll be able to either view only, uh, view and add segments, or even view ad segments and then even send to travelers. For instance, I have full access for all of the trips that I was added to as a collaborator. Um, so for any of these, I could just add new segments or uh, make any changes I'd like. But so, um, some might have uh, a lower access level, such as just view only. And then depending on your plan type, you may also be able to see all of the trips that have been created within your company by selecting company trips, right on the left, uh, the right, sorry. Selecting the filters icon just to the right of the search bar gives you the option to filter through trips by the date, so whether it's an active or a past trip, by the trip status, whether it's pending or published, and by the creation date, so whether it was created today, within the last week, or within the last month. Clicking on the little menu icon in the top left corner will reveal some of the other tabs, such as the library and admin tabs. I would also like to highlight the support portal. By clicking on support, you can gain access to our online knowledge portal, where you can also send questions to our customer success team. From the library tab, I want to spend the first portion of this intro webinar on templates and vendors, since these are frequently used by DMCs in the trip publisher. And we're going to go a little into the why and how you can use them. So by default, I'm going to be within templates. And templates are day by day itineraries, much like trips, but without specific dates. Instead, you set a template duration, which is 14 days, and then include all of the elements that you'd want in a great trip. Uh, templates can be reused over and over again uh, to create great uh, itineraries for your clients. Think of templates like a model of a trip, which can include all of the base elements that you'd want in a great trip, with room later on to add more specific bookings, like flights or insurance information or further booking details. So when you're initially creating a template, so let's go into a template that's still in the, the makings. 
So within a template, you can add destination content from one of our integrated sources, like a FAR or w, w Cities, and or content from your own library. Uh, templates can be really content rich in that sense. You can make your templates available to everybody in your company. So this way other advisors in your company can access templates you've created and vice versa. And that way you can collaborate as a team together and share the exact same templates. You can convert existing trips into templates so that they can be used again in the future. And you can even add uh, tours from integrated suppliers to create more creative and elaborate templates. So remember, using templates will save you time because you don't have to start from scratch each time. This gives you more time to personalize your customers' trips and to sell more. We're going to go a little into how to create a template today, um, but not too, too in-depth because I'm going to actually demonstrate how to create a trip. And they're essentially the same, but I just wanted to give a little context around why to use templates as a DMC. So I'm going to go into something that I've already created, sample template to Aspen, and I'm just going to unpublish it to make it available. So this particular template already has a myriad of activities and hotel bookings and destination content, this sample template to Aspen. Um, so if I was to continue add to this, I could also add things manually from my little ad icon on the right hand side. And this would pull from my vendors or from something manually. We're going to talk about vendors in a little while. Or I can add content from the left hand side over here. Usually the, the way I like to distinguish between the left and the right hand side is that everything on the left hand side is usually ready made. So you'd be importing from a supplier or destination content that was already created or a document that was already created. And on the right hand side, this is everything that you need to create manually. So it doesn't maybe already uh, exist within the trip publisher or at least not, uh, it's not necessary for it to exist already. So once you've created your template and published your template, like I just did by clicking on the publish button, the next logical step will be to convert that template into a trip so that you can then send that off to a travel advisor or a traveler themselves. There are a few different ways to convert a trip into a template, depending on your workflow. So we'll go over all of the different methods as well as the different scenarios that might exhort you to choose one method over the other. So if I had just published my template and I wanted to immediately create a trip from this, I could do so just by clicking on the options icon and selecting the create trip button that appears right here. So this workflow would be um, if I was already in the process of creating and publishing my template and I immediately wanted to create a trip from it, that is available from me right in this page here. Otherwise, if I was scouring my templates or the company templates and I had chosen one that was already created, I could, um, let's say the Rockies fake, not Rockies, that's pending, like Greece Honeymoon, and I had selected that one and I knew it was the right one, I could click on the options icon from my templates dashboard and create a new, temp a new trip from here. And then lastly, if I was already in the process of creating a trip, such as, uh, let's say, sample trip to Europe was already in the works and I needed to add to this, I can actually import a template that I've already created and published directly in. So let's go ahead and do sample templates to London, for example. And then I would just simply choose a start date within my trip and then import that template into my trip. So let's go back to my library. And now that we've got a little into templates, we're gonna go into vendors. So now let's take a look at what you can also uh, do with vendors and how to save profiles for hotels and other kinds of bookings in your personal vendors. If you frequently work with the same companies, i.e. hotels, tour operators, cruises, et cetera, that aren't part of our public database, you can always add those profiles to your own personal vendor list for future use. As a quick note, 
Um, our public database is uh, a series of available profiles for hotels and cruises that we pull from two different feeds, which are, I think, the Virtuoso feed and Travel Tech. That means that a lot of major hotel chains and cruise companies are already going to be available in your vendors from day one. So, for instance, if I look up the Four Seasons, you'll notice that there's already um, a plethora of Four Seasons that have been uh, create that are created within our public vendor database, and they include address info, they include any contact details, photos, etc. So I don't have to go ahead and add any of these because it's already part of the database. I can just uh, pull this profile if I ever need to add a hotel manually, or if I'm adding from a GDS or something, uh, I can have this particular hotel in the database match to what I'm importing so that the photos will appear within my itinerary. But again, if there's ever something that isn't available in the public database, maybe it's a much newer boutique hotel or it's an activity since we don't have activities available in the trip publishers public database, you might want to create your own. And there are two different ways to manage and create vendor profiles. The first would be within this screen right here in the vendors tab. So you can create and customize vendor profiles directly from this vendors tab. As you can see here, this is how I could create any new one. Or if I was in the middle of my uh, template or trip building workflow and there was a particular hotel or an activity that I thought I would use again in the future, let me just try to find one that doesn't have any photos. Let's take sample trip to Dublin. So for instance, this car company, if I worked with a particular car company again and again, and it wasn't part of our database, and I wanted to save this so that I could add photos or add some contact uh, information, I can also do it from within my template or my trip. So in the middle of my trip building workflow. So let's go back to my templates tab, my vendors tab, sorry. And let's talk a little bit more about option number one which is being able to create and customize vendor profiles within the database itself. This is the most convenient option if you want to create or customize many vendor profiles at once. So if you're new to UMAP, you may want to consider enhancing profiles from your top list of vendors um, because you can edit any of the different vendors that are available within the trip publisher, even if they're part of our public database. You'll only be, of course, editing it for yourself, but you can make a copy of it in that case and uh, make your edits from there. So you can take the time to enhance their profiles now and then skip this step later when you go to create your templates and trips for your clients, as your most used vendors will already have all of their relevant and important information available in the trip publisher. Alternatively, you might ask, when is the best use uh, for option number two, which is to create and customize vendor profiles from within a template or a trip? Personally, I find that this is the easiest way to enhance or create vendor profiles during the trip building workflow. So if you're already in the middle of creating a trip and you just thought that it would make a good, it would be a good idea to create a vendor at the same time, you might as well do it from this screen because there's no reason to go back and forth between those two screens when you can easily do it in the middle of building your trip or your template. Okay, so let's go back to our vendors tab and let's quickly add a vendor together using option number one since that way you can add all of your vendors ahead of time so for instance if i frequently book with the uh, boutique hotel Rome, but i notice that it isn't part of my vendor database let's just look it up oh i've already done this before but let's say it wasn't there and i wanted to add it for the very first time let's say Boutique Hotel Dublin. I wonder if I've done that one already. Boutique Hotel Dublin. Not exactly. So it's not there. So if I wanted to create it for the very first time, I can do so by navigating to the add icon and then selecting accommodation. From there, I'm going to enter Boutique Hotel Dublin. Boutique Hotel Dublin. And You'll notice that when I was typing it out, there was a couple of suggestions that popped up in the name field before I got to Dublin. 
Um, these are all being pulled from Google Places. They're all, they're all Google Places listings. So if I wanted to quickly add all of the information directly from Google Places, if this, place, this hotel actually existed, I just have to select any one of these and all of that information will auto populate in the address column. So I don't have to do any of the work myself. And I usually should suggest clicking on the listing. That way you don't have to add all the information yourself. Of course, in this case, mine wasn't available in Google Places because it's not a real hotel, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create it anyway. Oh, it pulled all from Google Places. I'll just get rid of that. Do, 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 do. There, get rid of that, 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 that. And we'll leave this as unknown. Save, get rid of that later. See, I can also make edits. But now that I have it saved as a vendor profile, I can make more detailed changes by clicking on the edit button and updating the address if I'd like to, or updating any of the contact information. So since I matched it from the Google Places listing, some other stuff populated, but I can also add my own info, like rue exemple, exemple in uh, Canada, if I could find Canada, etc. and just add my own info. And this is also where I can come to add photos if I'd like from any of the different photo options. And then after saving this vendor, you've officially added this hotel to your company's list of vendor profiles, and this is available for every single person within your company. Okay, so now that we've gone over templates and vendors, let's go to the TRIPS dashboard and click the plus new button at the top right of the dashboard to start the TRIP building process, just so we can talk a little bit about the process of creating either a template or a TRIP, it's quite similar. So after clicking plus new, I'm gonna enter a name for my trip, as well as some travel start and end dates. So let's do October of 2021. And you also, of course, have the option to add trip tags, which is a great way to apply labels to your trips. And then I'm gonna click create trip to save this new trip. On the main page of your trip, you will see a large gray thumbnail image and clicking on this image will allow you to add a cover photo. We always recommend adding a cover photo as this is the background image that displays in the traveler email, as well as the different formats of the client experience that we just reviewed. Now there are a couple different options for adding a photo. The first is by searching the image library. This is a free library of licensed images that is available to all users. The second is searching the web, or you can upload your own photo. So for our sample today, I'm gonna to search the web using a keyword and a website. I'm gonna use Unsplash and we'll just find a good website, like a good picture, that one and upload and voila. And of course you can always change this later on just by clicking on the banner. Okay, so for our sample today, um, I'm gonna to begin on the left side of my screen and then gradually make my way over to the right so that we can kind of explore all of the different options. Uh, for the instant, for the moment, we're gonna skip over travelers because we'll talk about that a little briefly towards the end and we'll go straight to import bookings. So import bookings is where you can access the different integrations that are available. So this is where you could import a GDS PNR, client-based res cards, and access any booking confirmation emails that you have forwarded into the trip publisher. You can also import from uh, Sabre Tripcase, Travelport, and Worldspan by clicking on the second tab, PNR Import. Now, I'm just going to very quickly import something I already have just to have a little bit of content within my trip. But we're not going to focus too much on integrations today because I want to focus on other things. So, just to get some good content in here, I'm just going to import from my Sabre Live integration. And then voila, all of my bookings from Sabre Live just came over. Um, by the way, if you ever need to go back to your main page at any point during the trip building process, just click on trip at the top of the navigation and it'll take you back to your main page. Of course, import template is just what it says on the trip, on the, the tin. You can import a template directly into your trip. So if I've already created one like that sample template, 
to London, kind of like we talked about before, that's just another method of importing a template into a trip or creating a trip from a template. And then after that, we have suppliers. So suppliers is where you can import bookings or content from a list of partnered tour operators or DMCs. This is also where travel agents using our platform will be able to reach out to you in order to broach collaborating on a trip together. Clicking on this button at the very bottom where it says click here for a list of DMC partners available for collaboration. We'll open a page that outlines how and where to get in touch with the DMCs using our platform so that they can then reach out to you via email in order to begin the collaboration process. And don't worry, we also today are going to talk about what collaborating even means. Following that, we have destination content. It's kind of like I covered earlier. UMAP is partnered with AFAR and W Cities, giving you access to curated guides and recommendations for over 500 destinations around the world. For AFAR, you can either add a full destination guide or just specific recommendations. Select from the list of trip destinations or click search by city name to manually enter a destination. I'm personally just going to click on London and then pull one of those up. And if everything here is to my taste, I can add this to my trip by clicking on add to trip. Choosing a date, I'm going to add it towards the end because I prefer to add these larger destination guides at the very end of my trip so that they're not clogging up the main itinerary and then I'll confirm that date. For W cities, select a destination and content type from that source drop-down menu, and then click on search. Select the checkbox to the right of the content that you want to include, and then click add to trip. And again, just choose a date and confirm that date. There are also several different ways that you can attach PDF, Word, or library documents to a trip. The first is by selecting documents. Select the second tab, file attachments, and then click the attach file button. So I'm going to add some sample of sample voucher for my desktop and then attach that. And then voila, if I need to remove or edit this, I can always click on the options icon for those. And you can also create, store, and manage your own content within your library, kind of like we touched on earlier before. For our sample today, I'm going to add a city guide for London that was previously created by coming back to content from library, this first tab, and clicking on add document. From here, I'll look up London, and then select the document and upload it. Clicking on calendar is where you can access a calendar view of the trip. And then lastly, settings is where you can come to view and edit trip details. Selecting the ellipses next to the trip name and date will allow you to duplicate the trip, create a new template from the trip. So if it's a particularly good trip, you can always create a brand new template right from here, or you could delete it altogether. And at the very top, the audit log will just give you a list of actions um, that have happened within your trip. So you can see when you made changes or when you added things, et cetera. And this is particularly helpful if you're collaborating with one or two people, because you can keep track of everything that everybody's doing. So you know if person A added something or if person B removed a segment, it's all captured here in the audit log. This is also, if I come back to trip details, where you can come to co-brand on your trip. As you can see here, I have a collaborator on my trip, so I can choose to make them the primary branding if I want them to take ownership of the trip and I just wanted to facilitate it. Um, I can, by doing that, I can also even hide my own branding if I want to make sure that nobody sees my branding. If I was just here to add a couple of segments, but the travel agents was the main, the travel agents branding was the main branding, I could always hide my own, even though I created the trip. There's no reason that I can't be fully in control of whose branding shows. Or I could just keep mine visible. And if I keep mine visible, it'll just say in collaboration with my particular branding after I publish this trip. 
and we'll show that, but I just want to give you an idea of the different ways that you can brand a trip. So if I go back to my trip, let's just open this in a new tab. And I go ahead and publish my trip. If I look at the web view, because I have two different brandings appearing on this web view, you'll see that, let's go into here. Ooh. What's my email on this account? It is travel advisor name. There we go, let's lock in. So you can see here that the main branding that I chose is the primary. And because I made mine just visible, it only says in collaboration with my company and doesn't give any other details. And I can always switch that around, reverse it, make just one visible, remove the other, whatever I'd like to do. Okay, so let's head back to our main page and just go back into that trip, sample trip to Europe for the Smiths. Your adventure for the Smiths. And now let's go a little into how to manually create your own segments from the right hand side. So on the bottom right corner of the trip, you can click the add icon to create your own segments, add cruise content and trip notes. Like we talked about earlier, we have thousands of vendor profiles available within the trip publisher um, for accommodations and cruises that include photos, addresses and contact information. But if you've added your own, those are also accessible from this screen here. So to give a little demonstration of that, I'm going to click on accommodation to add a hotel in Rome. So here I'm going to search for my hotel. We're going to look up the Rome Cavalieri Waldorf Astoria. And you can see that this hotel already has a vendor profile created that includes information about the hotel, as well as some photos of the property. So when I add this to my trip, all I need to do afterwards is add my specific traveler details, like the dates that they're going to be there, and then any of the times. And if I add this to my trip, I can then add any other pertinent details like the room info, pricing, etc. But the bulk of the work in adding the photos and the address is already done, so I don't need to add any of that myself. Similarly, to add a cruise, click the add icon and then select cruise. Enter the ship name, the sailing month and year, and then click the find cruises button. So I'm going to search for the Norwegian epic October of 2021 and then search that. And all of the itineraries that match your search will display here along with the sailing date. So you just need to pick the correct itinerary and date and then scroll down in order to import that. So let's leave this screen. I'm just not going to add that, uh, to, that uh, cruise into this trip. And lastly, you can also add a trip note. I'm not going to go over all of the different um, segment types just because they're all very similar. So we're going to go into another type of segment, which is a note. And this feature allows you to add a customized note for your clients that can include detailed links, photos and embedded videos. So for our sample trip, I'm going to add a bon voyage message for my clients. After selecting note, I'm going to add a title. So have a fantastic trip. The dates and times are entirely optional, depending on the kind of note that you're adding. And then just add your details. So I'll just say safe travels. But you can use notes for quite a number of things. You could leave um, a note about health and safety regulations. You can leave a before you go packing list, anything you'd like. And these can also be saved within your library. And if you want, you can always click the hide note button right over here. If you want to make the note internal for you or somebody that you're collaborating on the trip with. So if you want to leave a note about something that needs to be done or something you haven't done yet, you can always leave little notes for your collaborators so that they know where you're at in the process. And these kinds of private notes are only visible within the trip publisher itself. So no traveler will ever see this. So I'm just going to add that to my trip. And then a ton of different interactive features you can add to notes as well. And now that my trip is all good, I have already published the trip. So of course the process for publishing is quite simple. 
You just have to click the publish button in the top right hand corner. And you always have the option to leave a little note that will display in the traveler email. And um, if you're working on a trip that's sent to you by a travel agent, you may or may not see this option depending on your access level. So be sure to keep that in mind. If you don't see the publish button on a trip you're collaborating on, it's possibly just because of your access level and nothing else. Once a trip is published, it is live and all formats of the client experience will then be available. So that includes the web, PDF, and the mobile versions. This trip is dynamic, so you always have the option to make any edits or changes on an ongoing basis. And if there are any significant updates, always just remember to republish the trip so the changes will be reflected on your client side. You'll also notice a couple different icons that are displayed to the right of the trip name and date. And we're only gonna focus on the most pertinent today. So clicking on the share icon, allows you to add a collaborator or add your traveler's emails. You can also, of course, add a traveler right from this left hand side. Um, but today we're going to focus a little bit on collaborators. So the collaborator feature allows you to share your trip with other travel professionals like agents, suppliers, DMCs, vendors, tour operators, etc. So if I select collaborators, this is where I'm going to be brought to add my collaborators. Now, if the collaborator you intend to add doesn't have a UMAP account, that's entirely fine. They'll just be sent instructions on how to access their collaborator account. So if I go to add um, an email that doesn't have an account with us, like this one, for example, when I look for it, it'll tell me no account was found and it will prompt me to create an account for them, as well as choose an access level. So all collaborator accounts are free and can be used for up to 60 days. So if I just need this uh, person to collaborate with me on a one time basis, this is the easiest way to do so. Otherwise, if you are collaborating, collaborating with a travel agent who has a UMAP account, all you need to do is add either their email or their UMAP user ID right here in the search window. And I'll look for them. I can see that this agent was found. And now since I'm adding them as a collaborator, I'm going to be the one that has the ability to choose an access level. So for instance, um, I can choose contribute if I just want them to add their segments and nothing more. I can leave them a little note if I'd like, and then I'll add them as a collaborator. And they'll receive an email telling them that they've been added as a collaborator and how to access this trip. And again, any trips that you've been added to as a collaborator are going to be located within trips shared with me right here. Let's go back to that. However, if, and let's just go into my travelers for a second, if you notice that you'd like to change the access level, you can always do so just by clicking on the options icon, these three vertical dots, and you can remove the collaborator change the access level if you'd actually live, like to give them a little bit more power. So let's say I'd like them to be able to publish an invite, but not touch my own segments, uh, because this, this doesn't give them the option to edit or delete any of the segments you have added. So it might be ideal for you. You can always do that. Or you can resend the invitation if it got lost. And then lastly, if I go back to my trip, you can click on the preview icon located to the right of the share icon to access the web view and the two PDFs. And you can click on the pencil icon to edit all of the major trip details. Okay, so today we have reviewed various versions of the client experience from the web PDF to the mobile versions, highlighting some benefits and features for clients as well as how to build a trip or a template in the trip publisher experience. And we reviewed vendors and templates and some other features that are best suited for DMCs using the trip publisher. You should now be familiar with how to create a trip, but we also have some tools that will help you along the way. So our support portal, which you can either access from within the trip publisher or just by going to pub-support.umap.com is where you can access a getting started guide, especially for DMCs as well as step-by-step -step tutorials for all of the integrations and features that we either covered today or didn't have time to cover. 
We also encourage you to sign up for uh, a personalized one-on-one -on -one session, which is hosted at varying times every single day. You can access those just by clicking on webinars and on our website or any of our other advanced upcoming webinars. And if you have any suggestions for some topics that you'd like to see in the future that maybe we haven't done before, just reach out to us at support at umap.com with your topic and we'll try to include it in our next round of advanced webinars. And of course, I'll also be sharing a recording of today's webinar so that you can review this again on your own time. But now I'd like to spend a little bit of time answering any questions that anyone might have, um, just so that there's more of a live demonstration component. So I'll wait a couple of minutes and if there are no questions, then I'll end today's webinar. And if anything occurs to anybody later on, you can always reach out to us by email. I'm just gonna wait a second or two. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions. So I'm going to end today's webinar here. So thanks again for attending. And if any questions occur to anybody later on, you can always reach out to us at support at umap.com. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day, everybody.